Good afternoon from Okinawa, Japan, home of Okusubis. Today, we are going to break down this beautiful Subaru Impreza WRX STI V Limited Type R A and all the stuff that we've done to this. Uh, not only are we going to break it down, this is also kind of a farewell video, unfortunately. That's just one of those painstaking parts of this job, right? A lot of our customers are military and eventually they're going to go home back to the States. And this customer is going back to the States. Uh, this car is actually getting shipped out in two days. And uh, we're going to go ahead and break down exactly what we've done to this car. Check it out. Okay, so this car here, the owner, his name is Jeremy. When he first came to us, he said, I want to get a Type R or a Type R A. He already knew exactly what he wanted. So we started looking for what he wanted to, to we started looking for one of those cars. And actually, originally, there was a WRX RA that he was going to get. This car right here is actually a retirement present to himself, right? He's, getting a, he's in the military. He's been in for a long time. He's getting ready to retire. And he's taking this car back home with him. And uh, after we got the RA, WRX, and he actually already paid for the car, then we found this. And then when it came in, we showed him. And we said, hey, check this one out. Uh, it's not an RA, WRX, but it's actual STI, Type RA, V Limited. And originally, there was a full roll cage in it. A lot of the interior was gutted. And he wanted it to be a little bit more daily driver friendly. So we started off with interior. Let's check it out. So this is the interior of the V-Limited. Man, it's so crazy. When I'm sitting in it, I'm going back and thinking of all the stuff that we've done in it. And it's just amazing. Originally, we actually put in a Spec C interior to this car. But then he got a hold of these extremely rare semi-buckets. It's an STI option. And he picked these up and went with the black and blue interior to match the V-Limited trim, as you can see here. This is a number 331 out of 2,000. They only made 2,000 of these cars. If you're a purist, I'm sorry, because this customer is not. He went all out. This is nothing about this car that's original anymore, but we'll get into that a little bit later. For the interior, again, so he's got the Momo steering wheel. He went with the CAE shifter. This thing is crazy. Like It's got like no throw whatsoever, but even when you're in second gear, you let go and it goes to the center, so when you go into third, you're just pushing it forward. Uh, that is a pretty crazy setup. Dylan also has this setup. Um, we also did, I don't know if, uh, it, there's a BAB STI also that has that right now. But anyways, yeah, CAE shifter. He's got the DEFI gauges. Another really cool thing that we've done that is technically interior is the MAP DCCD system, which controls the DCCD transmission. And uh, you can do all kinds of dual mapping inside of there and you can control how much center diff lock, right? Whether it's 50-50 or rear wheel bi drive bias, all based off of like throttle position and everything like that. And uh, it's a really, really cool setup. Um, we actually got that same exact setup for the Legacy and Dylan's Forester. So check that out soon coming out next, maybe spoiler alert, install video on how to do that and then how to set up the maps. Watch out. So, um, but yeah, so we have that. Yeah, the V Limiteds, as you already know, right? It has the roof scoop. 
but not only is it a roof scoop, but check that out. There's a billet uh, lever there. These levers right here often break and uh, we changed that to a billet setup right there so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And uh, man, what else did he do? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the interior. Um, when it comes to the MAP DCCD, a really cool thing about this car is it's not a five speed anymore. So five speed type RA V limiters, they come with a five speed DCCD transmission. We have actually changed this transmission to a six speed transmission and uh, it's got a 3.9 final drive with that setup. So it's a transmission from a blah by STI. Something really cool about uh, that setup was the rear was already R180. So we just put the diff in and that's it. Uh, let's go to the engine because the engine was the reason why he went six speed because he didn't want to break his five speed because of that bad boy. Let's check it out. Okay, so this right here is the heart of the build. Continuing on with the story, right? So again, retirement present to himself. He originally started with a WRX RA. We ended up showing him this. He ended up going with this one. And like right away, the first thing that he wanted to do was upgrade the engine. He wanted to put an EJ207 inside of it, which means doing the merge, right? Pulling the dash, getting a GD harness, merging it together, slapping it all in there. That already in itself is a big job. And then he kind of threw us with a curveball and he said, and I also would like to do a 2.1 liter. And at that time, we kind of chuckled, right? Because we've never done a 2.1 liter, uh, nor do we really have the connections to be able to do it. Right now, we do everything with Outfront Motorsports. At that time, we didn't really um, do anything like builds, right? So. It just so happened when he wanted the V Limited, the V Limited kind of fell on our lap. And then he so wanted the 2.1 liter, right? Just so happened that he wanted a 2.1 liter. Well, we actually ended up getting a 2.1 liter because it was already installed in a blah by STI that we bought from mainland Japan. And it came in and had this engine inside of it. And uh, we were like, wow, that's crazy. Okay, well, hey, Jeremy, if you want this engine, we'll pull out of this car and we'll put it inside your car. And that's exactly what we did. And this engine is, it's got the HKS 2.1 liter stroker kit, Tomei cams. I'm going to try to hit everything on this engine bay, inside this engine bay. It's going to be pretty difficult, so sorry if it sounds uh, sporadic. But yeah, it's got HKS internals, Tomei cams. It's got Tomei head gaskets. Going to the bottom side of it, it's got the IAG uh, baffled and fin you know their, their aftermarket uh, oil pan really nice setup we actually have a video on installing that too uh, it's got Tomei equal length headers with a Blausch 1.5 XTR exhaust is the 10 centimeter housing and man when we first tuned this car we were blown away by the difference in torque. So we've done 2.5 liter, we've done EJ207s. This was the first time that we started messing with the 2.1 liters, and now we build more 2.1 liters than we do anything else. Um, and it's all because of this car right here. This is a really good and amazing learning curve for us. It just gave us a lot of experience. Um, yeah, so from turbo going to the top of the engine, Tomei inlet, HKS intake. It's got uh, ID1050X injectors. The front mount, does it look familiar, guys? If you guys have been following and watching our videos, this front mount intercooler should look familiar. Why? This is actually the front mount intercooler that was on Dylan's GF8. This is the Gretty front mount intercooler that was on his car. It's kind of cool to pass it on to this one right here. So he's got the Chase Bay's power steering kit, right? So it cleans that up a lot. Uh, Grim Speed electronic boost control solenoid. What is that thing? Like a Turbo Smart? Turbo Smart blow off valve. Uh, Tomei fuel pressure regulator. Man, this thing is so nice. Um, we recently also installed the oil cooler. I, can't, I think it was Gretty. Um, really nice oil cooler, like sits in on the side right here. But yeah, so the, t the, the, the setup is tuned on Carberry ROM, of course. Oh, it's got a four bar Cobb map sensor. It's on Carberry ROM, and this is one of the very few times that we've done the hybrid setup. So under 14 PSI, it's ran off of a mass airflow sensor. After 14 PSI, it goes into the, the VE table, right, the volume speed density. 
and uh, you kind of have like the, the best of both worlds. And a lot of the time that's typically done because the mass airflow sensor um, with, the fi with it, you kind of have to like bore it up to, to be able to make it past a certain amount of power. But really, I think this was just he wanted that hybrid. I don't think he really needed to do it. But we did it anyways for him because he said do it. It's got a Catless downpipe. It's got a GP Sports uh, exhaust. Really nice sounding exhaust, as you guys heard in those launches in the beginning of the video. Yeah, I think uh, aluminum radiator. Grim Speed Aero Oil separator. Don't go in the comments and talk about how junky these things are, guys. Right hand drive. All the good ones fit over here. Now that we're front mount intercooler, we probably could have done something with it, but this is like one of the first few things that we did. And then Okinawa is too hot to get that sludge on the inside of them things. So it works good. It works good out here, at least. We ain't have no problems with them. So they aight in our book. Clutch is a 559D Ogura twin plate. JDM. Oh man, the pitch mount is a beat rush. Just keep looking over it and just finding more stuff. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, the car rips though. It's actually a really, really fun car to drive. A, a buddy of mine that taught me a lot of the Subaru stuff, Rich, he used to always call this setup the best of both worlds because the older platforms were lighter, but the newer platforms got better technology and better performance. So the best of both worlds, you put them in one, and that's really what started us with the merges. Really fun setup. But yeah, that is kind of the, uh, yeah, the heart of the build. The EJ207 2.1 liter. That's why he went with the Blob Eye SCI DCCD transmission so he can make sure that his 5 speed is not going to break. Yeah, let's take a look at the outside of this car. Because that's really what Turn says. This thing not only performs amazing, but is also beautiful. So from the top here, this is the S201 replica carbon fiber hood scoop. And these thingies right here, I don't know what these things are called, but they look good. And these are from RPG. Everything else pretty much is Sea West everything. The bumper, Sea West, with the fog light covers. The grill is Sea West. He's got Sea West side skirts. Beautiful CE28. In the beginning of the video, you saw the white SSRs. Those ended up cracking from all the horsepower. I'm just kidding. I don't know what happened, but they did really crack. So he got CE28. And then uh, he put uh, AR1s on them, Nankang AR1s. Really likes these tires. So do we. These are uh, really good. They're like 80 tread wear. They take a little bit of time to warm up, but um, for so, like things like Gymkhana, a little bit too much of a soft comp compound just simply because warming them up is a little bit difficult. Gymkhana is like you'll have one run, you'll have a good gap as everyone else runs, and the next rotation you're doing it, so the tires are already cooled down. So a little bit higher tread wear is better for that. But anyways, yeah, again, he went with Brembo brakes. He's got Dixel slotted rotors. He um, has, I forget the coilovers, but the coilover is like on a 12 and 8 kilo spring. Really nice setup. Uh, feels really good for some people. Some people may think it's too stiff, but I don't, I don't mind it. Come take a look at this big old Boltex wing on this thing right here. Look at this sucker. This is that we take our chopsticks and eat our bentos on top of these things right here, man. This is a big one. Originally, when he first bought it, we took these spacers out and it was lower. But he actually likes it. He actually uh, he, he put it back on there, and that's kind of like a big iconic. Everyone knows this car because of that wing. But check that out! Bang! Type R A. That is so cool. Yeah, he's got an aftermarket bumper on this thing. I honestly don't know what bumper that is. Uh, we also recently put that on there. And he's got a tower bar that comes up. Usually it goes down into the trunk, but you can see it from the top. I love being able to see that. It looks so cool. And he's got like crazy braces underneath the car. Called Cusco, like every Cusco brace that you can get, he's got for this thing. That was fun installing. Ooh, I forgot to show you something on the interior. Check this out. Look at this. Super, super rare. 280 kilometer gauge cluster. Also, instead of just going to 9,000 RPMs, the red line, is, it's, it's passed in the red lines, but it's 10,000 RPM. So let's go ahead and hear what the exhaust sounds like. Something I really like about this car is the AVCS timing is set so aggressively in such a low RPM that when you start it up on cold start, that cold start area 
it might not be completely cold, but that cold start area is like right where AVCS starts to activate. And the cams aren't very aggressive, but it sounds like it's got aggressive cams. just the AVCS though. Beautiful car. Even got a JDM ready turbo timer on that thing. <laughs> All right, so looking at the trunk, it's like, what are you gonna show us the trunk for? It's basic, right? Well, actually, no, this thing still has a sound system in it. It's pretty crazy, right? That's actually not what I wanna show you. It's what the sound system is on. So all you GC8 guys, right? You know that, that flimsy little cardboard piece that the OEM stuff comes with and it ends up flexing down and it's junk, right? You can actually trim up from an SG5, even SG9, really whatever it is, but this back panel right here, that is from a Forester. And you can kind of trim it up and come take a look at this back part right here. It's got that rear Cusco brace. And we custom fitted that to really flow nice with even the Forester. Whatever thingy, maybe jig you call that thing. So that's just a really cool trunk if you guys want to get a good bottom piece for your sound system or you just want that good clean look get one from a forester it fits pretty good good enough for us all right guys appreciate you watching the video sorry for the sound and the rain you guys get to hear a little bit of what we hear on a weekly basis that tropical sound of the rain drops falling on my head but yeah, if you guys see this car in the States, let us know, right? Because this car is actually built for the States. Not a lot of the technical windy roads and things like that that we have over here, the AR1s. And these cars, we're working on them less and less, right? Because now, bug eyes, as you can see here, the GGBs are going to be going back home next, right? So I think the GC8s, as they're getting more rare, we'll probably work on them less. So it's kind of like that. That farewell to even the GC8s, farewell to you, Jeremy. Appreciate you and thank you for trusting us with your beautiful car. But as everyone knows and all of our customers knows, when they leave Okinawa, it's not bye-bye forever. If they need anything, they know where to find us, right? Get all them JDM parts, that good plug. But yeah, man, if you guys ever want to see a specific video or uh, have any questions, ideas, or whatever, we're all about it. It's all about what you guys want to see you on the Yurturbers stuff, so check us out. Appreciate you guys. Love, peace, and chicken grease.